there's no magical diet um, that can help with IBD that can treat IBD at this point. Um, so I'm going to give you some suggestions. So, so a well-balanced diet is what's recommended. A variety of fruits, vegetables, and foods with omega-3 fatty acids, things like fish, uh, cold water fish, tuna, salmon. Try to reduce or limit your, um, your intake of saturated and trans fats, red uh, and processed meats, refined sugars, or highly processed foods or artificial sweeteners. So you want to avoid those things. When you are in a flare-up, when your disease is active, your diet may look a bit differently than when if your disease is not uh, sorry, when your disease is not active or in remission. There's when you're in, um, when you're feeling well and your disease is in remission, there's no limitations. Uh, what's important here is to develop um, an understanding of what your trigger foods are. So as I mentioned, keeping track of what foods uh, make your symptoms worse. So you can keep it, track of them in an app, on a piece of paper, however you want. Um, and, um, you know, most common trigger foods, caffeine, uh, chocolate, spicy foods, alcohol, um, corn-based products, nuts and seeds, raw vegetables, lactose. I think those are, I think I've mentioned most of them. Those are most common trigger foods and, and everyone's different. So you have to find what, oh, what your trigger foods are. So eating small, frequent meals, um, especially if you are in a flare, that's important um, to, to just eat more regularly, but small amounts. Fiber is okay, um, except if you have a stricture or are in a flare. So don't be afraid of fiber. Um, it can um, give you a range of nutrients, and um, it's important to drink a lot of water when you are taking in a lot of fiber. And there's two types of fiber, soluble fiber, insoluble fiber. So when people think of um, nuts and seeds and, and whole grains, um, they, that is insoluble fiber. So it, it's, um, it adds bulk to the stool. Soluble fiber is um, things like, are things like oats, barley, um, beans, peas, lentils, and they pull water into the intestines. So it makes the a little bit more watery of a stool, softer stool, I should say. Fats are important, especially when you're in a flare or you're not able to take a lot of calories in. And there's some examples there. Protein, so meat, fish, eggs, beans, and lentils are important. Uh, supplements and vitamin, vitamin supplements, mineral supplements may be needed as well. Uh, multivitamin, vitamin D, calcium, vitamin B12, uh, all could potentially uh, be important. Enteral nutrition, so it is that is a liquid diet, um, and um, you could potentially um, be on it if needed. If you have a, you know, if if you are in a flare really bad or um, you're just not able to take take in the enough nutrients. And there are specific diets um, that are still being tested to see, okay, do they really, do they decrease all these, that inflammation? How, you know, what is the impact of diet on IBD? So they're still being tested. They're still emerging, but um, you might hear um, specific diets, uh, low FODMAP diet, Mediterranean diet, and the Crohn's disease exclusion diet are all diets that um, and researchers are, are looking to see uh, how do they, what role do they play in IBD and um, decreasing that inflammation?